This is ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Nobody is advocating that we get rid of S-CHIP or there's anything wrong with it, really. What happened is it got caught up in the politics of the budgetary process. Just seeing that large amount of children uninsured suddenly would be devastating. The Children's Health Insurance Program, it helps children of low-income families, but the funds are getting low. What does that mean? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on the CHIP program in a bit. The first hour top seven stories at 7, and that would be the weather. When there are winter weather advisories in effect for parts of Florida, you know it is cold. Let's head over to ABC 7 Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan with the first alert forecast. Bob. You'll see it very often, Alan. You're absolutely right. We're talking about maybe one to three inches of snowfall on the ground accumulating across north central Florida. On top of that, an ice storm is going to be a big factor along I-75 and I-95 over the upcoming 12 to 24 hours as the storm gathers. The news for us, no advisories as far as uh, we're concerned. There's no windshield advisory tomorrow night. It will be back with us, though, as a cold blast of air is headed our way. There's the winter storm warning right now. This is a warning for Tallahassee all the way over to near Jacksonville and stretching up to Valdosta and into all of Georgia. We're talking a major winter storm uh, down south. That's tough as far as treacherous driving goes. Ice on the roads, the worst kind of driving that you can think of um, again and uh, snow falling as well into Tallahassee. They can see up to an inch there. Winter weather advisory south of that into Gainesville. They're going to get some freezing rain and also the possibility of snow there and a wind chill advisory to our north. The rains start late tonight and tomorrow morning for us. We get rain mainly here and uh, the snow will be falling to our north even at uh, 1030 in the morning. Tallahassee still getting some snowfall, uh, freezing rain all across north uh, northern portions of Florida and the south Georgia. This is going to be a, a tough going for folks uh, traveling northbound along the interstate system. So keep that in mind. And then the cold air ushers in and looks like we could see near freezing temperatures uh, by Friday morning and Saturday morning. We're talking low temperatures down in the low to mid 30s for us. And as I mentioned, a wind chill advisory will be back with us more than likely tomorrow night and into a Thursday morning. Al, well, much more on this coming up a little bit later. Back to you. Bob, thank you. The drop in temperature is also affecting businesses on the Sun Coast as well as other local tourist attractions. Places like SurfFit haven't been as busy with people not wanting to receive lessons on paddle boarding and kayaking. The cold is also keeping people away from the beaches and don't forget about the plants and the pets. We will usually will increase bedding for them, increase caloric intake for them, offer more food. Um, we also provide heaters, heat lamps, heat generators. Although Jungle Gardens protects its animals, visitors are still able to interact with the flamingos, parrots, and alligators. The cold weather policy at the Salvation Army is now in effect. The Salvation Army says it had an additional 66 people spend the night and expect even more tonight. When the weather gets below 40 degrees, the Salvation Army waives its $12 nightly fee. If it's uh, a danger to uh, folks to be out in the cold, then uh, we do have the shelter operate uh, as a cold weather shelter, which is different from normal operation, uh, just in the fact that people can come in uh, free of charge to escape the elements. Same rules at the Salvation Army in Manatee. There is also turning points on 17th Avenue West in Bradenton for those who need it. And it's not just people. Animals are also trying to stay warm. Manatee County Animal Services is asking for donations of gently used blankets and towels to keep animals warm. Donations can be dropped off at the Palmetto Shelter. It is also reminding pet owners to keep your animals inside during the cold days and nights ahead. The new year is bringing hikes to the minimum wage in states and cities across the country. As for Florida, we are putting the minimum into minimum wage. 18 states across the country implemented minimum wage hikes January 1st here in Florida, an increase of 15 cents, moving the current minimum wage to $8.25 an hour. Some say the 15 cent increase is not enough. Other states, they're definitely, the minimum wages are definitely higher. So if Florida could get to like match those other states, that'd be great. But every little bit counts. 
The hourly increase would mean full-time minimum wage workers would earn about $300 more a year. With the new holiday and holiday travelers making their way back home, AAA and local law enforcement are stressing the importance of the move over law. The move over law means if you see an emergency vehicle on the side of the road with lights activated, you need to move over to the next lane. Last year, over one fifth of police deaths were due to vehicle related crashes from people not moving over into another lane when an officer was responding to a call or issuing a citation. Move over law, it's a $136 ticket. It's three points on your driver's license. And uh, more importantly, the consequence is it, just imagine if you hit somebody. King adds if you can't move over, it is suggested to slow down 20 miles below the speed limit. A possible lead from the arson case in Venice from last week. Two separate fires at the same place on Christmas Day caught the eye of fire officials. Then the past weekend, another fire at the same location as the two before, bringing the total to seven vehicles damaged. The Venice Police Department says it interviewed the suspect and witness, but no charges have been filed yet. An offender will go to the scene, commit an arson or some type of crime, and then that's it. They'll disappear and not return. In this case, to come back two additional times is unique and also troublesome. The Venice Police Department is increasing patrols in the area and continue to investigate the fires. Punta Gorda is welcoming its first female police chief. Pamela Davis replaces former Chief Tom Lewis, who was found not guilty of culpable negligence in the 2016 accidental death of a woman during a Citizens Police Academy training exercise. During Davis's first 30 to 90 days, she plans to assess the entire department from leadership to policies, training, and focusing on community policing. She is planning a citizen's chief advisory council to provide the community with more access to her office. And still to come, what is going to happen to low-income families when the CHIP program runs out of money? We'll be right back. It doesn't take a scientist to cure hunger or a fancy economist to create safe housing. It takes imagination, creativity, sweat equity. When I think of kids going to school hungry, hunger, homelessness, in this land of plenty, seriously? Come on, we could fix this. Help out or don't. The choice is yours. Fact. The top three Marriott hotels in North and South America are on the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, according to a recent survey of 363 Marriott hotels, the Marriott at Grand National, the Marriott Shoals Hotel, and the Grand Hotel. And two of the top three Renaissance hotels are also on the trail, Ross Bridge in Birmingham and the Battle House in Mobile. Southern hospitality still rules. For reservations or information, visit rtjgolf.com resorts. Soldiers in the Army National Guard serve to give back to their country and communities. Their part-time commitment qualifies them for an array of benefits, such as affordable health and life insurance benefits, education benefits, including tuition assistance, student loan repayment, and GI Bill programs, a retirement plan based on part-time service, and VA home mortgages. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more about all the benefits available in the Army National Guard. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Watch ABC 7 wherever you are. On our live stream, on mysuncoast.com, on the ABC 7 My Suncoast app. Powered by the I Associates, providing sight for life. Featuring traffic maps and live radar, dining with recipes, and My Suncoast restaurant guide. Visit mysuncoast.com. Click on the Apps tab to download the ABC 7 My Suncoast app for Apple and Android. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. I'm Stephanie Webb. And I'm Ray Collins. The juror in the Jimmy McNear case that claimed he couldn't get a fair trial due to a racist jury is now set to appear in court. We'll tell you what questions that she might face for McNear's defense team tomorrow on Good Morning Suncoast. John? Well, another shot of cooler air headed our way. Cloud cover around as well. We'll talk about that bright and early.
tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. For 20 years, federal funding for the Children's Health Insurance Program, known as CHIP, has helped shrink the number of uninsured children in Florida to an all-time low. It has bipartisan support, and that's needed. That's rare these days. But as Congress has rushed to pass tax reform last month, it somehow failed to renew the program. And now CHIP is set to run out of money by March, leaving 6,200 kids on the Sun Coast without health coverage. ABC 7's Ch Adam Cellini has more. Hey. Sarasota mother Bobby Pope can't work a full time job after a two year battle with cancer. She relies on Medicaid to cover diabetes treatment for her two youngest boys. Oh, I wouldn't be able to afford anything because I think like one vial of insulin is. Oh, between two, three hundred dollars. Pope is lucky her kids don't need the Children's Health Insurance Program or CHIP, which has covered children in Florida with household incomes too high for Medicaid since 1997. Dr. Patricia Blanco hoped the popular program would get another five year extension, but in September, U.S. lawmakers let the CHIP budget lapse, leaving 375,000 children in Florida at risk of losing coverage. Just seeing that large amount of children uninsured suddenly would be devastating. In the last seven years, the rate of uninsured children in Florida dropped almost 10 percentage points to an all-time low of 6.2 percent, according to a Georgetown University report published in September. That same report states health coverage for children helps translate to success in school and better economic outcomes for themselves and their families. That was such a win-win situation. So many families were so positively impacted by that. Um, I can't tell you how many families just cannot afford health care and the costs are rising. Many of these families still pay monthly premiums for CHIP. And Bill Colgate, vice president of MCR Health Services, a nonprofit serving Manatee, Sarasota, and DeSoto counties, says they aren't the ones usually looking for handouts. Often it is the working poor. So it's individuals that have jobs, but the job doesn't come with health insurance for their children and uh, they don't qualify for Medicaid because of their income. So it's really people stuck in a very, very difficult spot. Without it, Colgate worries some families will turn to the emergency room, an even larger strain on taxpayers, or worse, avoid health care completely. It's much better to get the health services before catastrophic health problems occur. So how did this bipartisan program run into trouble? Keith Fitzgerald believes lawmakers focus too much on failed attempts to repeal and replace Obamacare. Nobody is advocating that we get rid of S-CHIP or there's anything wrong with it, really. What happened is it got caught up in the politics of the budgetary process. Republican leaders have refuted these claims. We asked Republican Congressman Vern Buchanan for comment, but his office could only send us a statement saying he is optimistic a bipartisan solution will be reached before Florida's funding expires, which could be in March. More politics surround the current bill to replenish CHIP, which proposes cuts to one Affordable Care Act fund and shortening the period to pay late premiums. Only 15 House Democrats approved that bill before it headed to the Senate, worried it's another attempt to undermine the Obama administration. I just can't even believe that we would go backward in time like this. So hopefully, you know, our legislatures will um, listen. Now important was CHIP funding for Florida in particular? Well, their 2017 allotment from the federal government was $686 million, fourth highest in the nation. In the newsroom, Adam Cellini, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Coming up, doctors on the front line and an explanation of the politics of it all at the Trapezoid. Are you a food lover, restaurant goer, or home cook? Then check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, and helpful step-by-step -step videos. And you'll love the restaurant guide with direct links to your favorite Suncoast eateries. Whether you're cooking in or dining out, whet your appetite with tasty tips from Chef Judy at MySuncoast.com slash dining. We are problem solvers striving for answers. Relevancy on every platform. We are driven to create content that's compelling, engaging, where it matters. We are neighbors that care about solutions, believers in making a difference. Leaders, innovating in an exciting era of multimedia, reaching to always be the gold standard in our evolving landscape. We are 
Raycom Media. Find your opportunity today. Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're going to find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. Thanks to all of you who participated in ABC7's Paris Vacation Giveaway Contest. Join us as we congratulate our grand prize winner, Heather Caston of Bradenton. She and her husband, Clint, are going on an amazing six-night dream vacation for two to Paris, the most romantic city in the world. Thank you, ABC7, for going to Paris. Congratulations, Heather and Clint. We hope you have the trip of your lives. ABC7, we're here for you. Welcome back. As we all know too well, Congress these days has a tough time with the concept called bipartisanship. The CHIP program has always been an exception. CHIP provides health insurance to children whose parents earn too much for them to be qualified for Medicaid and too little for that to be affordable when even offered by uh, health coverage from an employer. The program costs $14 billion and needs to be reauthorized, but in its push to pass the $1.5 trillion tax cut plan, Congress ran out of time to do anything about CHIP, and as it stands right now, the program will run out of money here in Florida by the end of the month. And joining us for more is Dr. Bill Colgate of MCR Health Services, Dr. Frias Federico, a pediatrician in Bradenton, and Keith Fitzgerald, a political science professor at New College. So Keith, let me start with the politics of it all because um, I don't understand this. It is bipartisan, Republicans and Democrats uh, support it, yet they did not act on it, why? Well, you don't understand it because it's not rational. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, there's not some thoughtfulness to this. Just to emphasize the characteristics of this program, people have stereotypes that people who are getting some kind of government assistance are lazy, they're not working or something like this. This program focuses on families with kids who work but cannot afford insurance on their own. However, it's not an entitlement program. They have to pay for a portion, so it's just subsidized. So these are people who are doing what we want them to do, doing the right thing, and if they don't get insurance, they uh, will cost more. So it doesn't make any sense, and it really just got caught up in uh, opposition to the Affordable Care Act and the budget problems they caused by giving too big of a tax cut for rich people. Okay, here's what I don't get. Uh, in the House, Democrats and Republicans uh, uh, support different versions of it. Vern Buchanan, our member of Congress who Adam could not get a hold of, he supports a, a version that would have offsets, meaning that to pay for a chip, you would have to cut something else, and I don't get that. We, well, could, we, we could afford a $1.5 trillion tax cut plan, but we can't afford a $1.4 or $14 billion annual chip program. Back when uh, the Democrats controlled Congress, back in the day, two different times, they operated on something called a PAYGO system, which is anything you paid for uh, uh, had to be offset with a, a decrease in something else. But this is Selective PAYGO, a program that helps working class kids to get health care. Oh, we can't fund that unless we find the money somewhere else. But a tax cut for billionaires, uh, that we can do. And it just doesn't make any sense. Dr. Federico, you are on the front lines. Have you tried to contact our congressmen and our senators? Well, we, we frequently tried to reach out, especially when we knew the chip was going to be a problem in September of last year. The main issue is that you know they have very little access. We call, we send emails, and the response has been 
less than ideal. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, you can get to talk to one of their helpers. They take the information. They don't get back to you. You send emails. They'll send you a nice email that they will, you know, look into the information. But no real steps. We need these kids to get coverage. Specifically, whose office has you, have you called? Both of the senators. And the congressman or not uh, the congressman? One of the congressmen. All right. Uh, doctor, if you could just explain again w what kinds of children fall into this category that you see who are on SHIP? At, at MCR Health Services, uh, the majority are children that are well, that need immunizations, that need preventive services, that, that need treatment for minor acute illnesses, as was referred to, uh, to, to keep them from going unnecessarily to the ER. There is another small subset covered by CHIP of very complex uh, chronically ill children that are also covered that require very close observation by pediatric and family medicine specialists. Um, okay. those, those are kids that require a comprehensive, complex care. And they are under children's medical services, which fall within the ship. And I would imagine that it, they cannot afford it to be cut off. Of course not. All right, we are just getting warmed up. We'll have much more on ship right after we check the first little weather. Stay, stay with us. So I kind of grew up all across the country. I come from five generations of military men. My dad is still active duty. My grandpa is retired Marines. I like going for runs with my dog. I love, you know, taking her out to the dog beach over in Venice. There are so many things here to do on the Sun Coast. My goal every day when I come into work at ABC7 is to tell your stories, give you that major local news and those details that you really care about. I'm Jacqueline Matter and I'm here for you. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. WWSB ABC7 is an equal opportunity employer, and we're looking for qualified people to join our dynamic team. For a list of current openings and to apply online, visit www.mysuncoast.com slash contact slash employment. If you're a motivated team player and you want a rewarding career in a fun, fast-paced working environment, WWSB ABC7 could be the perfect fit for you. Check out our list of openings now. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. It doesn't take a scientist to cure hunger or a fancy economist to create safe housing. It takes imagination, creativity, sweat equity. When I think of kids going to school hungry, hunger, homelessness, in this land of plenty, seriously? Come on, we could fix this. Help out or don't. The choice is yours. Our conversation on the CHIP program continues right after we get the check on the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Alan, the last time we had a winter storm warning for Florida four years ago. Doesn't happen very often, and one is in effect now for North Florida. Snow for the deep south. This is a major storm gathering. In fact, two areas of low pressure are going to kind of merge just off the coast of Jacksonville. It will bring snow throughout Wednesday morning, then eventually on into Thursday morning up along the uh, South Carolina area. North Carolina, some areas there on the Outer Banks and near there, could see up to a foot of snow before it's all said and done. But Tallahassee could get an inch of snow. Now, on top of that, there's going to be freezing rain. This does not depict that. This is just depicting the snowfall. We can see ice accumulations up to one to three inches. When that happens, 
power lines snap as well as tree limbs fall and uh, roads become treacherous. You think snow's tough to drive in? Ice is the worst that you can expect there, and that will be on I-75 and 95. That'll be the major story tomorrow. Van Wazel webcam showing uh, skies were clearing a little bit, but that was no consolation for the beach goers as temperatures never made it up past 60 degrees, and a uh, wind chill this morning was at 32 at uh, freezing at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport right around 6 o'clock this morning. Uh, we have some rainfall in our forecast too. On top of that, rain is moving in by sunrise tomorrow. We could see some moderate showers as the low pressure area develops. We have one area of low pressure coming up from the Bahamas, another one moving across the Gulf of Mexico right now. And this one has produced snow in the Gulf. Uh, that's right, you don't see this very often, but radar returns showing some moderate to heavy snowfall earlier this afternoon south of New Orleans. New Orleans didn't get the snow, it was actually farther south than that, indicating some very cold air, a little disturbance there heading off to the northern portion of the state where it will bring that ice storm, which will cause all sorts of headaches for travelers uh, heading northbound. And it looks as though uh, we're going to see a majority of this miss Atlanta. Now, Atlanta is a, a big hub, obviously, for air, air travel, and the, the major part of this storm is going to be along the east coast, but it's going to be very windy throughout the northeast and throughout the deep south. Now, rain starting to develop here and there. Expect a few brief light rain showers through this evening. A heavier rain coming uh, right around uh, sunrise tomorrow. And there's that winter storm warning. The area in pink from Tallahassee all the way over to near Jacksonville. And there are winter weather advisories south thereof. You notice we're not in that right now, but I think our wind chill advisory will be back with us as early as tomorrow night and Thursday morning. Right now it's 51. The dew point 44. That wind is still brisk northeast at uh, 15 miles an hour, and wind chill really doesn't come, become a factor until the temperatures drop into the 40s, so it could be a little bit colder late tonight. 58 the high only today. 41 was the morning low, but you factor in that wind out of the north at 15 to 20, it made it feel like 32. No rainfall to report today, and for the month, just eight hundredths of an inch. Right now, temperature 51 in Sarasota, 37 in Tallahassee, and 35 in Jacksonville. And as temperatures go around town, low to mid 50s up and down the coast. The Gulf water temperature at 65, Mayaka City 51 and 54 into Arcadia. So here's the hourly forecast. Showers at 8, 9, 10, possibly up to about 11 o'clock. And then the rain should slowly come to an end. We may see a few brief showers after that. And then partly cloudy skies, but breezy and cool. Highs tomorrow will only reach into the upper 50s. So yes, keep your jackets and sweaters uh, handy uh, throughout the next several days. You'll see that in the long range forecast. Small craft advisory remains in effect. North winds at 15 to 20 knots. Choppy conditions out there for boaters. Here's the extended forecast and a good chance for morning rain. Uh, turning colder, highs only in the upper 50s through Friday, just a little bit warmer on Saturday. Low temperatures Saturday morning, 34, 35 on Friday morning. We could see some freezing temperatures mainly east of I-75. And then notice what happens. Temperatures go back to normal by Sunday afternoon and starts to warm up Monday and Tuesday. Al, well, Alan will be right back after this. Our nation's servicemen and women show great courage and leadership both on and off the battlefield. When they transition to civilian life, they can apply the skills and values they learned in the military to the workplace. That's why the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes is urging employers everywhere to be smart, bet on a vet. Hiring a veteran is also a great way to show your appreciation for them. To learn more, call 1-888-44-SALUTE. Are you a food lover, restaurant goer, or home cook? Then check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, and helpful step-by-step -step videos. And you'll love the restaurant guide with direct links to your favorite Suncoast eateries. Whether you're cooking in or dining out, whet your appetite with tasty tips from Chef Judy at MySuncoast.com slash dining. Looking for something fun to do on a Friday night? Then come to Music on Main, the first Friday of every month at Lakewood Ranch. Enjoy free live music, dancing, great food, and lots of fun for every family member, even the furry ones. Meet up with friends, enjoy activities for the kids, or make it a special date night. And be sure to stop by the ABC7 booth and say hello. Mark your calendars for Music on Main, first Friday of the month, 6 to 9 at Lakewood Ranch. Brought to you by ABC7 and these sponsors. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always place the mission first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. 
They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. We answered the call of duty and left our homes to serve in far-off lands. Now, we answer another call, this time at home, in our own communities, to respond in times of chaos, to use our strength, our skills, and our experiences to bring hope amid devastation and destruction. Together, as a team of brothers and sisters, we're continuing our mission to make this country a little stronger and a little better each day. We are Team Rubicon. Welcome back. We're talking about the CHIP program, and joining us for more is Dr. Bill Colgate of MCR Health Services, Dr. Frias Federico, a pediatrician in Bratherton, and Keith Fitzgerald, a political science professor at New College. Uh, Dr. Colbate, uh, Colgate, um, there are 220,000 children in Florida who are on CHIP, uh, a little bit more than 3,100 in Manatee County, 3,600 in Sarasota County, and you say that you see over a thousand in your practice alone if this fund runs out of money what do you do we'll continue to take care of them on a sliding fee schedule basis however the parents will often choose not to to access that care even on a sliding fee scale is it groceries is it is it fifteen dollars to see your pediatrician often groceries and, and doctor you said that there are other things that go into it including the fact that some parents won't choose not to go to work. Exactly. I mean, if you have a sick child that doesn't have access to health care, they're going to delay the care until the child is really sick and going to end up in the emergency room. The parents are going to have to take care of that kid. They're going to lose time of work. They're going to be less productive. Increasing the cost of that illness is multiplied exponentially. Parents are not going to be able to afford to have access to care. That's what they need. It simplifies the illnesses, they bring it early, it will get back to work earlier rather than wait for the complications of illness. Keith, in the end, do you think Congress is going to re-up the CHIP program? They'll do it at the end of the day, but uh, they have to have, what I think is really interesting and just personally appalling is you're revealing preferences here. They could have taken care of this uh, $14 billion in an over a trillion dollar budget is a drop in the bucket. They could have taken care of this right away but they had lots of other priorities that came first. So, yeah, I think they'll get it done at the end of the day, but why are we doing this? And, and I would just tell people in the audience who think, why should I pay tax dollars for these kids to get health care? Listen to what they're saying. If you're cold-hearted and don't care about the health care of the kids, be a business person. You're going to end up paying more at the end of this when people become acutely ill than you would have if you just gave them access to good health care. You know, we talk about this concept all the time, but I still don't think that, by and large, people get this. If they are going to their own uh, private physician like yourself with this insurance program, um, it saves money rather than if they have to go to the emergency room to get just your coughs and colds treated. I mean, 80% of those visits to the emergency room are illnesses that could be taken care of their primary care physicians. And unfortunately, if they don't have access to that or they cannot pay for that, then they choose the emergency room. And it will make the cost a lot higher. I would say 100 to 1,000 times high. And having practiced in the emergency department for almost 20 years uh, prior to joining MCR Health Services, the emergency departments are not set up for primary and ongoing care. They're very good at taking care of acute care. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about uh, uh, preventive medicine, treating uh, uh, non-acute illnesses, and teaching them healthy habits that will carry on for years and years to come. That's not what emergency departments do, not to mention the cost. Keith, uh, let's go over this again. Uh, was this program basically a victim to the attempt to repeal and replace Obamacare? Was it just, did it fall into the category, it got into the, now the schedule? when we debated the tax cuts, where did this go off the rails? Well, the, the, the timing of this particular program comes due every five years, and it just happened to come due in the middle of the debate about the ACA and in the final uh, version of the budget. So it just didn't get the attention that it needed to, to 
uh, to refund it, and, it, and it's really sort of ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever, because this is a program that everyone who looks at it says it's cost effective, well, it's working. If Congressman Buchanan uh, is supporting the bill that would require you to look for offsets, meaning that you would have to cut something else to fund this, what is wrong with that? I mean, a lot of people who are watching this right now are, are saying, look, if you, if you want to fund something, find some place to get it, but don't keep coming back to us. I, you know, as I say, uh, back a few years ago, uh, when the other party had that Congress, they made everything have to pay for itself with offsets. So I'm completely in favor of that. Fiscal responsibility is a really important thing. We could find this money if we wanted to. Just think about it. We have uh, one aircraft that has been worked on for so long, the final bill for a single aircraft will be a billion dollars. That means 15 of those air aircraft would pay for health care for all these kids across the country and save us money. Why can't we find that money? Of course we can find that money. Is there a better way to offer health services to uh, children and families who, who fall into this category than the way we're doing it right now? Well, the, the CHIP program in Florida has a variety of programs where, depending on the parent's income, will define where do they fall. They pay a certain amount and they are uh, supplementing that insurance. Just to give you an idea, on ACA, since ACA came in, only 7% of the patients that were on CHIP uh, were part of the marketplace. So the, the money is used, it's a budget that gets distributed among you know, healthy kids, uh, Medicaid, and the Children's Health Services, where the majority of more labile patient population is. Those are the chronic kids who require more intense care they're going to lose their coverage. Those kids are going to need the multiple interventions from a specialist uh, if that money is not approved. So, so Dr. Colgate, what, just theoretically, what would happen tomorrow if that is the day that we run out of chip funding? I think you would see a, a dramatic increase in uh, absenteeism in schools for kids, uh, parental absenteeism at uh, work, and the ERs had better buckle down. Okay. And again, I, I would imagine there's, uh, there's an element of folks who are watching this right now who, uh, again, say that, you know, you know, it's up to these parents to, to work and it's up to, to them to earn enough money to support their families. If you cannot do that, you should not be having children. <laughs> well, first of all, the you know, children... that's where they go. Uh, no, I understand, but the children exist. They're actually here. So we can't unwind the clock and take the kids away. But, but look, look at this program and what it actually does. You know why you get the $14 aspirin and the $20 Band-Aid in the hospital? Because the hospitals deal with kids who become acute when they could have been treated earlier, and then they don't, there's nobody there to pay the bill. So they have to cost shift. So you pay for it in taxes, you pay for it in cost shifting, you're paying for it. So I would say to those people, just be smart. One way or the other, we're paying for this. We can pay for uh, care up front and save money, or, and, and remember, this program is for working families. It's not, it's not, for, it's not for the uh, unearned, so, so people can't so, pay for it. Uh, Dr. Colgate, describe the uh, typical family that is under CHIP that comes into to your practice. It's a, uh, a single mother who uh, works and uh, the child needs their uh, immunizations. Uh, they need uh, basic screening for any of a number of different problems and they need access should the child get a sore throat or an ear infection to avoid trips to the emergency department and they also want health education. They want health education that that other uh, uh, health care settings aren't uh, uh, prepared to deal with and that leads to ongoing wellness in addition to that one visit. And, and Dr. Federico these are families where either health insurance is not offered at their pa place of employment? There are many of them that are not. There are others that are above the poverty level so they don't qualify for services under the Medicaid. So this is not an entitlement program. These are working families. Not only that, if they have to go to an emergency room without insurance, they are going to lose a lot of the you know, money they have in reserve for situations that they cannot afford. 
um, they're going to have a higher cost of medications, they can get preventive services, they can get immunizations, which can prevent multiple illnesses. Uh, Keith, uh, we only have a less than a minute left, but I, it, could this also be caught up because Congress has to deal with keeping the government open in the next couple of weeks? Well, uh, actually, they did throw a little money into it with the continuing resolution they passed before they left. But, yeah, but again, I say, you know, it reveals your priorities. This could have been taken care of up front. It doesn't cost a ton of money. Uh, and then you could be trying to find what you're cutting in lots of other programs that are not essential to the health care of children. All right, we have to take a quick break, and we'll be back with final thoughts in a moment. Sarasota Institute of Lifetime Learning begins its 47th season on Monday, January 8th in Sarasota, Venice, and Lakewood Ranch. Meet Warren Jones, pianist to the world's best-known stars on Monday, January 15th, and Chris Hill, career diplomat and four-time ambassador on Tuesday, January 16th. 72 Global Issues lectures by renowned experts, 24 musical conversations with great performers, subscriptions available now, single event tickets at the door. For more information and to purchase season tickets, visit sillsarasota.org. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Watch ABC 7 wherever you are. On our live stream, on mysuncoast.com, on the ABC 7 My Suncoast app. Powered by the I Associates, providing sight for life. Featuring traffic maps and live radar, dining with recipes, and My Suncoast restaurant guide. Visit mysuncoast.com. Click on the Apps tab to download the ABC 7 My Suncoast app for Apple and Android. Soldiers in the Army National Guard serve to give back to their country and communities. Their part-time commitment qualifies them for an array of benefits, such as affordable health and life insurance benefits, education benefits, including tuition assistance, student loan repayment and GI Bill programs, a retirement plan based on part-time service, and VA home mortgages. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more about all the benefits available in the Army National Guard. We are problem solvers striving for answers. Relevancy on every platform. We are driven to create content that's compelling, engaging, where it matters. We are neighbors that care about solutions, believers in making a difference. Leaders, innovating in an exciting era of multimedia, reaching to always be the gold standard in our evolving landscape. We are Raycom Media. Find your opportunity today. Everyone's buzzing about Suncoast View. I like watching the Suncoast View. I like the Suncoast View. The cooking segments. I love the recipes. The theater segments are terrific. They're just fun. For smart, fun talk in the afternoon, watch Suncoast View weekdays at 4 on ABC7. Download the all-new ABC7 First Alert weather app now. And our guest joining us right now for final thoughts, Dr. Colgate, you are at the administrative end of this. You're, you're, you're seeing the, the families come in the door, but you're also looking at the books. What do you want people to take away from this conversation tonight? I, I think that the take home is, as you mentioned, well in excess of 3,000 uh, children in our area that would be negatively impacted. It's in Manatee and then another 3,600 in, in Sarasota. Correct, that, that would go away. And think if that's your child. That, that may seem like a small percentage of children. If it's your child, it's 100%. So there's, there's families that will be immediately impacted. They won't access the care that they need or they'll access it at the wrong place. Our children are our future, and their health is, is their future. Dr. Federico, what have mothers and fathers been saying to you over the last weeks when the prospect of this happening is becoming more real. They are very concerned. Sort of then even lose their coverage over time. They are not going to have the ability to have adequate care. If they don't have it, they are going to have to either hold on until the illness is severe enough that they will take the ER. Patients are scared. They are concerned because they are losing the ability to take care of their kids. Prevention is less costly than the treatment of illnesses. Keith, if this is passed by Congress, is it likely to be on this five-year plan again that it, uh, it's going to continually de be reauthorized? Yes, that's exactly what's going to happen. And remember, this program is a federal program, so it also has to get support at 50 different state levels to work. 
But you know, the point I'd like to emphasize, obviously we should care for kids, but we pay twice as much, both governmentally and out of our own pockets for health care in the United States than any of the other uh, rich countries. And yet our outcomes are at the bottom of that list by several measures by far. This is one of the programs that shows you how you can do this efficiently and effectively, and it's working. So it should be a top priority in the budget process. It shouldn't be an afterthought. Again, I, I remember seeing uh, uh, congressional hearings over the last p a few weeks where you had just as many Republicans speaking up as Democrats on this. The program works. Everybody admits that. And uh, it was passed in a bipartisan way. Uh, anybody who looks at it and does the numbers says, heck, this is a really good program. It makes a whole lot of sense. But it comes down to priorities. If you believe uh, in, in these kind of, uh, uh, if you believe in taking care of these kids, you're going to make this happen. We'll have to leave it there. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank FYI, you. you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And for the latest on local breaking news, don't forget to download the updated version of our app. If your current app doesn't work, it's expired. Just go to the App Store and re-download it for, by searching for WWSB or My Suncos. We want to thank all our guests for being here tonight. Dr. Bill Colbate, Colgate of MCR Health Services, Dr. Frias Federico, a pediatrician in Breda and Keith Fitzgerald, a political science professor at New College. When we return, we'll have our consumer watchdog Jerry Zivick here, plus politicians returning to Washington after their holiday break with a lot on their plates for 2018. Everyone's buzzing about Suncoast View. I like watching the Suncoast View. I like the Suncoast View. The cooking segments. I love the recipes. The theater segments are terrific. Join Stephanie Roberts, Linda Carson, and Bo Beth Yates for hot topics, everyday issues, celebrities, food, fashion, fitness, and everything in between. Nothing is off limits. They're just fun. For smart, fun talk in the afternoon, watch Suncoast View, weekdays at 4 on ABC7. It doesn't take a scientist to cure hunger or a fancy economist to create safe housing. It takes imagination, creativity, sweat equity. When I think of kids going to school hungry, hunger, homelessness, in this land of plenty, seriously? Come on, we could fix this. Help out or don't. The choice is yours. So I kind of grew up all across the country. I come from five generations of military men. My dad is still active duty. My grandpa is retired Marines. I like going for runs with my dog. I love, you know, taking her out to the dog beach over in Venice. There are so many things here to do on the Sun Coast. My goal every day when I come into work at ABC7 is to tell your stories, give you that major local news and those details that you really care about. I'm Jacqueline Matter and I'm here for you. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but first, when we surf the web for products and see there is a free trial involved, it's tempting, it sounds too good, be, too, too good to be true, or is it? Here to talk about it is more is uh, ABC7 consumer watchdog Jerry Zivic. Jerry, Happy New Year to you. And happy New Year to you and your family. You're, uh, I appreciate that. The one thing, your, your top advice to folks is uh, never pay for a freebie. What do you mean by that? Well, you see this freebie and all of a sudden they want to charge you for shipping and handling or they want you to sign up for a free trial program. That's a very slippery slope because once you're in, it's very difficult to get out. Right. So the, the freebies that I see is, um, you know, you get it by putting your credit card information uh, and I'm always skeptical when I see that. When, when you see that on an offer, what does that actually mean? Run. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there is absolutely no reason that on a free offer you should be required to provide any credit card information. I mean, but, but that's usually how they work. And, if you, and I would imagine that the thinking goes is if you like the product or the service, then 
then they set up the, the monthly deduction. No, what happens a lot of times, there's boxes that are checked. You know, when you s check, you agree to the principle, to the agreements and the rules and regulations. There are boxes checked there that basically you're signing up for an ongoing program with these companies. Now, it, it's important to take into consideration the, the offers and the promises these products make, correct? Oh, well, the, currently the FTC just made a huge settlement against the company where they built people out of $180 million over f a five-year period where they made all kinds of representations that the products were so wonderful, celebrity endorsements, that there were free trials, and none of it was really true. Well, what kind of products are we talking about here? Because we see everything from, let's say, um, you know, signing up and, and get uh, access to, you know, uh, whether it's cable services or, or websites on the, on the web for sports. Is there a difference between that and a, uh, you know, a, a product that will be sent to you by mail? Well, we've talked about this a lot on the show. We had a whole trapezoid discussion once about dietary supplements and what a slippery slope there is on that, that there are, there are rules about efficacy, and there, that there has to be some backing for what the claims they made. And so those are probably one of the biggest uh, areas where you have to exercise a lot of caution. And I know you mentioned this, but we should, we should mention it again. Who in the government is overseeing these companies in terms of uh, these offers and, and most importantly, the free trials? It's probably the FTC is the big point person in the federal government. Locally, you want to go to the Attorney General's office. And, and again, your big advice is to slow down. Don't just jump on these offers. There's always another free offer. It's the, it's the Internet. If it's too big, if it's too shiny, run. Sometimes the cost of free is too expensive. All right, Jerry, thank you very much. Jerry uh, joins us every other Tuesday on your For Your Benefit segment. Stay tuned. We'll be back with primetime headlines in a moment. Thanks to all of you who participated in ABC 7's Paris Vacation Giveaway Contest. Join us as we congratulate our grand prize winner, Heather Caston of Bradenton. She and her husband, Clint, are going on an amazing six-night dream vacation for two to Paris, the most romantic city in the world. Thank you, ABC 7, for going to Paris. Congratulations, Heather and Clint. We hope you have the trip of your lives. ABC 7, we're here for you. WWSB ABC7 is an equal opportunity employer, and we're looking for qualified people to join our dynamic team. For a list of current openings and to apply online, visit www.mysuncoast.com slash contact slash employment. If you're a motivated team player and you want a rewarding career in a fun, fast-paced working environment, WWSB ABC7 could be the perfect fit for you. Check out our list of openings now. Looking for something fun to do on a Friday night? Then come to Music on Main, the first Friday of every month at Lakewood Ranch. Enjoy free live music, dancing, great food, and lots of fun for every family member, even the furry ones. Meet up with friends, enjoy activities for the kids, or make it a special date night. And be sure to stop by the ABC7 booth and say hello. Mark your calendars for Music on Main, first Friday of the month, 6 to 9 at Lakewood Ranch. Brought to you by ABC7 and these sponsors. Are you a food lover, restaurant goer, or home cook? Then check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, and helpful step-by-step -step videos. And you'll love the restaurant guide with direct links to your favorite Suncoast eateries. Whether you're cooking in or dining out, whet your appetite with tasty tips from Chef Judy at MySuncoast.com slash dining. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always place the mission first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. Checking primetime headlines, Congress gets back to work this week with a long to-do list as it heads into the midterm elections. President Trump wants to make infrastructure a top priority in 2018, and lawmakers will have to strike a deal on a spending deal by January 19th to avert a partial government su shut shutdown. ABC's Arlette Saenz joins us from Washington. 
A new year comes with a new to-do list on Capitol Hill. At the top of President Trump's wish list, infrastructure. Well, we're going to get infrastructure. Infrastructure is the easiest of all. The president is eyeing a $200 billion package to rebuild the country's roads, bridges, and airports. But that program needs buy-in from Democrats. The Democrats have no incentive with this wave, as I say, building, to not surf that wave and try to obstruct everything the president wants to do. The most time-sensitive of issues, striking a spending deal by January 19th to avert a partial government shutdown. Then there are the Dreamers, nearly 800,000 undocumented immigrants brought to the U.S. as children. Lawmakers want to find protections for those Dreamers after the president ended the DACA program last year. The president's now trying to blame Democrats, tweeting, Democrats are doing nothing for DACA, just interested in politics. The president wants to have responsible immigration reform. Uh, he said before that he would like to include uh, a DACA resolution in that process, and we hope to be able to work with members of Congress to get that done. The packed legislative agenda comes as Republicans look to defend their majority in the midterm elections. And they have a whole bunch of things that need to get done, not only politically, but for the country as a whole. But the difficulty the Republicans face is they're in a very bad year. That majority officially narrows in the Senate tomorrow. Vice President Mike Pence will swear in two Democrats, Al Franken's replacement Tina Smith and Alabama's Doug Jones, changing the makeup in the Senate to 51 Republicans and 49 Democrats. Arlette Signs, ABC News, Washington. It appears flying in 2017 was relatively safe compared to previous years. There were 10 fatal commercial passenger and cargo crashes last year, 44 passengers and crew members killed. That's much lower than the five-year average of 17 crashes with 495 deaths. All of last year's deaths occurred either on cargo planes or smaller propeller-driven passenger aircraft. In addition, major U.S. airlines have not suffered a fatal crash since 2001, and there has not been a fatality aboard a U.S. carrier in nearly nine years. Preparations are underway for next month's Winter Olympic Games in South Korea. The Winter Games are always cold, but of course this year's opening ceremony will likely be especially frigid. It is being held at an open-air stadium exposed to gale force winds. The average temperature in early February is roughly 21 degrees with a possible wind chill factor of about 10 degrees. And if you want to become a millionaire, there is still time. The Mega Millions jackpot for tonight's drawing is up to $363 million. It's a huge amount of money, but the eye-popping numbers are more common than they used to be. Mega Millions made a change in October, giving you more numbers to choose from and making it harder to hit the jackpot. That makes it more likely for the grand total to roll around into the next drawing. But if you don't see me here tomorrow, you'll know why. That's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.